Welcome to the creative interview once again. I'm Brian Baxter and today we have with us Randall Christopher. He's a visual artist, a zine maker, host of the twice monthly sketch party at the Whistle Stop in South Park uh, here in San Diego as well as an award-winning filmmaker. So Randall, welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem, thank you. So, so what was your background? How did you get into art and get into the creative process? Or were you like young when you started out? Or? I was always drawing and, and able to draw, but I wasn't really into art. I skateboarded a lot growing up, and that's, that was my life. And when I got serious in my late 20s and decided to go back to school, I studied art, um, just because it was the easiest thing yeah. for me to finish school with. And, but I got into it as I was in undergraduate school, Florida State University, started making comics, um, I spent a lot of times, a lot of time writing, so comics became really interesting for me. And then I came out here and I did graduate work at UCSD in the visual arts, and started doing animation, some sculptural stuff, of course, skateboard related. Uh, <laughs> built ramps, yeah. call them sculptures, <laughs> and then they give you an MFA. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so you you went to you went to school, so you got an MFA. Yep. It's great. Yep. Um, and how does that did that? Do you think it helped you a lot in your um, in your artistic endeavors? Yeah, it is really, it, it's, it's almost hard to um, overvalue, I think, what you get out of a graduate program, especially like UCSD, like just understanding, understanding what you're doing. So much of that stuff I didn't really think about and I'm kind of resistant towards like so many of the hoops I had to jump through and just talk about locating your art. Yeah. And a lot of it was years later, like years later, I started to realize the value of really understanding what I was doing. I mean, that's what graduate school a lot of times does. And even the undergrad program where I was at Florida State, which was really good, it wasn't focused on craft. Like, here's how you do a, wa use watercolors or oils. It's like, what are you trying to say? And what are other people saying? And it's this big conversation that's been happening for 150 years in modern and postmodern art. Mm -hmm. um, understanding what you're doing. So that really equipped me to, to do anything, really. Gotcha. So, um so when you're creating art, what do you what do you want people like to take away from from what you create? You know, I'm I'm a person that generally leans more towards I have a really specific idea I want to get across. Um, different people have different approaches where they like art to be really open to interpretation and just sort of suggest ideas, and that's just certain people's mode. I'm a little more I don't know old school maybe where it's like I have a clear idea and if if you don't understand it then I feel like I've failed. But you know, for example, my film. It's a, it's a very straightforward historical story. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is exactly what happened. Here's maps of what happened. I'm interested in the truth of what happened. Um, so usually it's, it's a specific idea, a lot of times political. I like the idea of beauty, you know, and that's something that's not talked about a lot um, in the contemporary art world. Well, it is, but you know, there's so many other things to talk about. Right. You know, when I was at UCSD, we're always talking about the border. We're talking about power. We're talking about class. Yeah. We're talking about systems. Everyone's a card carrying Marxist there. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, something that gets lost sometimes, for me, I came back to late, you know, in three years of graduate school where it's like, I like this idea of making something beautiful. Um, and that's, that can be sophisticated too. It doesn't have to be a sunset. Right. You know, you can't just kind of make a sunset and think you're doing anything groundbreaking. But I think beauty is still important in the world and, what, and exploring that. You can't go wrong if you, <laughs> if you make art about what you're into. Right, that's true. Yeah, a lot of your, I saw your paintings are very illustrative. I mean, they're, yep. yeah, they're very uh, graphically oriented. Yep. Right, so that's great. I spent a lot of years as a graphic designer, still do graphic design. Okay. So that influence yeah, unquestionably comes in and I look at a lot of graphic designers. So, and again, that's like, I just like making something that looks, looks cool, looks beautiful, that's hard. Gotcha, yeah. And so you also help other people with their creativeness by running the um, sketch party. Yep. How, did, how did that start? How did you start? That doing? actually started in LA. So sketch party uh -huh. is, was originally started in LA by three, three friends that uh, me and Tom Halbrick over at uh, Big Trouble Tattoo, um, they had always been telling us, you guys got to start sketch party in, in San Diego. They've been going about six years, seven years now. Oh. And they meet weekly and we knew them through Comic-Con and we were just friends for a long time and we just decided um, a little over three years ago now, let's do one. We did it at a really small place. I didn't know if anyone was gonna show up and the place was packed. Nice. And so we needed to find a bigger one and I know Sam and Craig over at Whistle Stop and they were super supportive. And you know, we're coming up on, we passed three years of Sketch Party in September and they have just been amazingly supportive. Anything we need, they help us out and it's 
the community has been really great. That's that's great. Yeah, and the times that I've been there, it's been like like you said, it's been packed. Yeah. And every time you go there, get there early or get there late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really early or really late. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you have more help too with uh, the supplies and stuff, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Artist Craftsmen, they've been awesome, and yeah, I can't speak highly enough of them. Yeah. They're, anything we need, like I said, they're they're just great, and we like working with someone who's. They're all artists that are there. And a lot of those people were already coming before they start, came on board and helping yeah. us officially. Yeah, yeah so you so get super a lot easy. Of comments from people that, you know, about how you have this and how, how, what do they think about having the sketch party? And yeah, you know, one of the cool things is from very early, people start to meet each other. And one of the things that I thought was cool was um, certain people would come and certain people had a space where they wanted to show art and they would discover artists. So we have certain artists that never showed, I, there's a number of people who come there, mm -hmm. regulars, who before Sketch Party weren't showing art anywhere oh. publicly. Um, and have come up to me and said, you know, I show art around town now because of Sketch Party. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, but some people, find, some people even find people at Sketch Party. Um, so it really, it really helps the, the art community. And, you know, a few people have found uh, their significant others. Yeah. I keep waiting, there's a few people. I'm waiting for them to get married. I'm like, Sketch Party, yeah. Made that happen. <laughs> nice. So people go to sketch party. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> to, to you the, might, uh, you might meet second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Great. At the whistle stop. That's awesome. So that's great. Um, so your film. So yeah. So the it's driver's crazy. Red, yeah. It's a awesome film. I really I love it. Thank um, you. So how did that? I mean, how did you start that? That's got to be something that that you know you read or something that you're interested in that kind of sparked that. Yeah, it was a New York Times article, January 27th, 2016, just reading it in a coffee shop and just sort of a historical curiosity mm -hmm. um, uh, and tangentially related to this larger narrative. And I just Googled one of the main people from this story. and I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And just got more and more interested to where I, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I was checking out books in the library, DVDs. And I tell people I was working on this film for two months before it first occurred to me I think I'm making a film. I think this is going to be a film. All right. And, you know, a lot of things, it's a long story, but a lot of things came into place, particularly the actor, Mark Pinter, who's local. And through amazing circumstances, he came into my life and just, just did an incredible job. Um, so he's local. And then my friend Spencer Rabin, who is also local, helped on it. And, yeah, I just wanted to, I spent a year and a half on it. Yeah. Not knowing what would happen, and I started submitting it, and I just got rejection, 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 <laughs> rejection. Six or seven, right off the bat. But then it got a few little ones, and, you know, walking home at night, nine o'clock, November 2017, and Sundance called. Nice. You know, they call. They're the only ones. A lot of times you get an email, and it's like, yeah. you know, congratulations, we've accepted your film, but they don't do that. They call. And so that, that really opened the floodgates, and, you know, last month we passed 100, 100 festivals, 37 awards. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. It was a crazy year to start. It's the same film that everyone was rejecting last fall. Yeah. I didn't change it at all. The, no no re-editing. It was a, no, yeah. Nothing different. It yeah. just worked out. That's yeah. great. So you're, so you did all the art. Yep. On that. Yeah, I wrote it, directed it, drew it, and animated it. Mm -hmm. and, and it took how long to to write the script for that? I probably spent just a couple months. Um, there was probably a good month or two um, where I was like deep into research. Right. So really exploring and. It was really deep into my research I discovered this unsung hero. So the film's, that story has been told before. Um, it's, a, it's a reasonably well-known story, um, historical moment, 1960. Um, but no one has ever told the story from the perspective of this one guy, but I was so deep into research I discovered this guy. I'm like, oh man, I gotta tell the story from his perspective. Gotcha. And you, did you kind of make up that character? And what? No, no, it's definitely like, I discovered this guy wrote a book. Oh, okay. And so I read his book cover to cover twice, taking notes. And it's like, everything's exact. Like April 27th, you know, 1960, he was at that embankment. We can go on Google Street View and I'll take you in Buenos Aires to where he was. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was really, not, not everyone's like that, but for me it was like the details, exactly the 203 bus line, where it was, everything exactly how it happened. That's awesome, that, that's an incredible story. Um, so, you have, so, you ha so you have the idea, and you, you create the, the animation, and then it's gonna take you, how, how long did it take you? How, how did the creative process work in, 
editing and, fil and finishing that film? You know, I've done animation before, so I knew what I was getting into. I knew it would take a long time. Um, for, for certain reasons, it didn't take as long as a lot of it's not frame by frame animation. Um, and it's certainly not 24 frames a second Disney style that yeah. would take me 10 years to make a 15 minute film. Right. So a lot of it's just drawings that, that are sort of in process drawn in as the narrative is unfolding. For me, it was like the drawings were important, uh, but the script w was most important. Right. And, and Mark's delivery of the script. It's the kind of thing where I, I liked the script a lot. You could read the script and it's awesome. Just you don't have to have anything else. And I was going pretty good. And I was like, this, should, this could be really good. And then I came across Mark. And once I had his recording and I'm like listening to it, I was like, this is incredible. And it's like, you could just not even watch the film and just listen to Mark telling this story. And it's riveting. Yeah, it is riveting for sure. And so the, the graphics were in a sense, they look cool and everyone really likes them, you know, but for me, it's just like sketchy stuff that I normally draw in. And I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why everyone's responding so much to the drawing. I mean, people like really, the art's so good. And I'm just like, it's just sketches that, <laughs> Um, but it was kind of secondary, you know, because I, I wanted the drawings to not take away and get really colorful. It's black and white. I wanted you to like really hang on every word that this guy is saying, because man, it's like 15 minutes and I love it. He just like puts the pedal on the floor and he doesn't stop. And that was even challenging when we're recording where we had to, we broke it up a few times, but then it wasn't, we didn't really have the flow. And so we did another recording session at the studio and I was like, let's do it all the way through. And it's just like impossible, like 15 minutes of just like intense. By the end of 15 minutes, his voice is just wrecked. So it was, it was interesting. Yeah. I think people are responding <clears throat> maybe to the whole thing put together. I mean, it, everything informs, you know, the new music, the, the, vo the sound, For sure. the vocals and the art all together. And so you'd probably get that from people just responding to the film. Yeah. And then you said that is one you know, 37 awards. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, that's great. It's crazy. So what's the most, what's the most exciting, you know, few, or maybe the most exciting few um, places that you've shown? You know, nothing beats Sundance. Yeah. I'd never been to Sundance. And to go there as a director, I didn't really even know what that meant. I'm not a filmmaker. And when they call me at nine o'clock at night, it's funny because I'm like talking to one of the programmers. I'm like, did you see the film? <laughs> And he's like, of course I saw the film. He's <laughs> like, that's why I'm calling you. Um, but, you know, it was like, he's like, look, 9,000 short films were submitted and we took 69. Whoa. And even that didn't really register. You know, I, I was like, I started talking to him. I remember, it was like, you know, my, my film is, we haven't even talked about my film, but it's, you know, the Holocaust is in the background of my film and Nazis and things like that. And I had spent, this is, I started the film before Trump, before he was even like on the radar. And then when I finished my film, he's in power. And it was literally right after I finished my film, Charlottesville happened. You know, someone was killed. People are shouting, Jews will not replace us. And so I'm talking to the guy. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even think like Charlottesville. We started talking about like our world and politics. And I think for me, it's always been like that, where it's all about these ideas that I'm doing. I'm not really interested in like this idea of being a filmmaker or an artist. Um, I'm more interested in cats. <laughs> Let's talk about cats and not paintings of cats. The whole idea of a painting of a cat is so we can talk about cats, right? Or beauty. We can talk about beauty. And the whole idea of my film is not this idea of being a filmmaker. Yeah. It's all about like, let's talk about this historical event that's really important. The story. Yeah. And like how it relates to our current time. Gotcha. But definitely, you know, that being said, um, the European premiere was Krakow. Krakow Film Festival, which was incredible. One of the oldest running film festivals, super prestigious. I never went to an award ceremony like that. I mean, even at Sundance. Like it was like being at the Oscars. You had like a translator in your ear they give you and it's all in Polish and I've got live English translation happening. Um, but that's an hour from Auschwitz, you know? And oh, so yeah. I went to Auschwitz, $4 bus ride, and, and I went to Warsaw and, and was able to be there for a lot of the history. I mean, that was ground zero of the Holocaust. So that, for the journey of this film, that was really special. And I would say, you know, being at Holly Shorts, playing at the Chinese theater in August, and it won Best Animation, and then they were trying to get me back out into the crowd, and I was like, well, okay, I go back out there, and it won Best Director, which they've never given Best Director to an animated film. Congratulations, um, that's incredible. Yeah, that was big. And then winning the shortlist produced by The Wrap, you know, that was like only award-winning films submit to that one, mm -hmm. and then out of that, they only picked 12, and I was just honored and humbled to be, even be there. I was like in that crowd at the awards, like all these top films, and it's like the Driver's Red won the whole thing. And my 
I, I hope they didn't record my speech because it was really dumb and I wasn't ready. Because <laughs> I was just like, um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So I have to ask, so what, are the, what are the Oscar chances then? Oh man, came to a screeching halt. Oh no. Yeah, two weeks ago. Oh, no. Yeah. So we were already, we were thinking with as many wins as it had that um, it would get to the short list, which is 10. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I was planning to be at a lot of screenings in January and really trying to get the nomination. Right. And it's just like, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the big studios, you know, um, Pixar, there's two DreamWorks films, there's Disney. Uh, gotcha. um, a lot of it, all the stuff that was picked for the short list tended to be 3D animated kid films, like a little furry animal, yeah. black and white sketchy film about genocide. <laughs> yeah, not, not as furry. Yeah. Um, it's definitely like a little more commercial fare, I think, yeah. this year. And not, not as much art, which is a bummer. Yeah. Even if it's not mine, yeah. it's like I saw so many amazing, like really inventive, groundbreaking animated films coming out of Europe. Yeah. And it's just like the, the big California studios. Like it was all big California studios represented by the shortlist. It's an amazing film and really encourage people to see it. So where can people see it now? You can follow The Drivers Red um, on social media. Um, there's a chance it'll do some, it'll be online at some point. I can't really, I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but for sure it's going to be online at some point. Cool. We'll put that in the, in the show notes and we'll make sure yep. that people know where to, where to get that. Yep. So for other places for you, where can people find you online? I actually do have a website, randallchristopher.com. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So not as much social media, but randallchristopher.com. There's art for sale. Okay. Zines. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you for, for coming and telling your story. I appreciate it. It's a, that's a very exciting uh, journey. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So that's it for this, this time for the creative interview. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe to our channel so you can get uh, notifications on when we're releasing a new video, when we have released a new video. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Stay creative.